Well, welcome, welcome again. Uh, this time we're going to be jumping in into a special tax tip series. And this is going to be part one of two, okay? So there's going to be two parts because this one is about 20 tax write-offs that you can claim on your next return. Now, this is only for personal, by the way, for individual returns, right? You're 1040. I share previously other short uh, videos and less than 10 minutes, also longer video versions, and those were more for the business uh, deductions, okay? But this one, we can go ahead and jump right in, and I just want to kind of do a little recap of the most important 10, okay, write-offs for individuals, okay? And this is hopefully is going to help you a little bit as you're preparing your taxes, um, um, and especially, you know, not to miss some of these credits and deductions that you're able to claim um, if you're eligible, right? So once again, um, if you find this information, you know, uh, valuable, I would appreciate that uh, you'd like to subscribe and share. Absolutely. It always helps a little bit uh, with the YouTube um, channel. And the fact is that, you know, I do provide all this free content. And as you can see, I don't have any sponsors or uh, any interruptions throughout the videos. Um, and that's because I wanna bring as much value up front right now with you uh, as the audience. Um, so let's go ahead and go ahead and jump right in. If you don't know who I am, I'm Liz Soria. I am a tax accountant and uh, been doing um, this for a very, very long time, just to say the least. So one of the main uh, deductions that we see in tax return is the child tax credit, okay? And uh, as we know, this could be up to $2,000. And that was actually, by the way, um, increased, um, especially as of 2020. And uh, and I think this was very necessary because most of uh, taxpayers, Mary, finding especially jointly, they lost a lot in credits when, you know, it was switched between the personal exceptions were completely removed, right? If you recall that. Uh, and because of that, any big families that have more than two children, um, you know, unfortunately, you ended up, um, I would say, you know, with a big loss. That is the truth. So even though the, you know, the, the personal, uh, you know, standard deductions increase, it didn't really upset the big differential when you had those additional personal exemptions that you were allowed previously, right? So this child tax credit really came handy with the increase of $2,000. As of recording of this, I'm actually doing right in December of 2022. This is applicable for 2023 and also beyond this. And the reason for that, because all these credits have existed for more than, I, as far as I can recall, over 10 years. Uh, now, please understand that some of these amounts will change with time because this always adjusted for inflation. Every year, it can increase maybe two, 300, 500, or even sometimes even more, or it can even be reduced, again, depending who's a president and how many revision has been done through the tax code. And yes, every president does make drastic changes. So again, um, like I say, I, I believe that this should be still effective as of 2023. And as you prepare your return, you want to just kind of have a little recap of what's available out there and hopefully you're eligible. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in again to the child tax credit, like I said, up to $2,000. And usually up to $1,500 can be used as a potential refundable credit. Okay, and that's really to under understand that a credit, it's something that usually you get a refund money back on your uh, return. A tax deduction is something that reduces your income. So I just want to kind of uh, bring that up to your attention because I know sometimes there's a little bit of confusion with that. Okay, so that is very good. By the way, I will be sharing the article. Um, and this article comes with other links, anything that you see, how it works. See, it comes with a different link to it. And like I said, I will share that in my description box if you want to go ahead and go more in depth for each specific credit and deduction, okay? So this one's for the child tax credits. Now, one of the things I want to mention also, and by the way, this is usually under the age of 18. That's something else that's very important to know. Now, the child independent care tax credit, okay, is under the age of 13. 
So within December 31st, if your child already turns 13, you lose it. It has to be really technically, they should say 12 years, okay? Now, one of the things that's important is you usually get up to 35% as a state here of $3,000 expenses for one dependent and $6,000 for up to two or more dependents, okay? That is the maximum that you get in child dependent care. So if you have two, ch two, two children, then that means you can get up to two, $6,000, all right? Now, again, remember, it's before the child turns 13, okay? Now, American Opportunity Tax Credit. Now, I think this is such a great uh, credit, especially if your children are already in college or they're attending the four-year uh, you know, university. Normally, it will allow you to have a claim up to $2,000 that you have spent in tuition, books, equipment, school fees, okay? But does not include, and I want to make sure that you see this, but did not include expenses and transportation. Those are considered additional expenses, okay? Now, you can take up to 25% up to the next $2,000. So there's a maximum of $2,500 that you can take per year, okay? Very important to know. Now, what's the differential between lifetime learning credit and American opportunity credit? There is a big differential. Lifetime, you do not have to be a what is called an accredited uh, school. Again, that means a college, a university. Lifetime, you can use even if you're going through a private school or what we consider a vocational school, okay? And a lot of times, this gives you 20%, as stated in the article, up to first $10,000 for tuition and fees. Maximum amount, even though it says 20%, it's really $2,000, okay? So that's important to know. And also, it does not count for living expenses or transportation expenses, okay? Those are additional expenses that you have, okay? Now, this is a wonderful uh, lifetime learning credit. It's wonderful, like I said, if you're not going to a graduate school, you can still get that $2,000 towards um, your tuition that you spend on that private school or vacation. Okay, let's go for the next one. Student loan and interest deduction, up to a deduction. Remember, this is not a credit, it's a deduction, a reduction of your income, 2,500 per taxable income. Okay, that's only interest on your student loans. Now, this is something I get questioned a lot. What happens if, even if your, your child is already in the early 20s, for example, and they're not paying for the interest. It, it's who the, the you know, the, the 1098 was issued to, okay? That tuition that you get the tax form, it depends on the name, okay? Who's responsible for paying that tuition? If it was your parent, then your parent will probably have to claim that versus you claiming, okay? So it's who pay for that interest. That's very important, especially if, if you're younger and you're looking at this video and you're just trying to understand whether it might be more beneficial your parent or you to do your tax return. That is something that you need to talk to a tax preparer or perhaps CPA, someone that can guide you a little bit. I'm only here, all the information I'm sharing here is only for information purposes. I wanna make this very clear. This is not a direct advice. I'm just giving you information that hopefully it can determine what are the best deductions as long as you're eligible for it, okay? Again, this is something that you need to discuss, again, with your parent and a tax professional to see who's going to benefit more of this. Again, look at the name of your tax form. Who has been paying for that interest? That is the person that should be taking that deduction, okay? Another thing, adoption and credit. For those parents that have adopted ch children, in 2022, they give you up to $14,890, okay? That's an adoption cost per child. So if you adopt it too, that's the maximum you can get. That's almost $30,000 for two kids, okay? Now, the credit, it decreases as your, yes, you guess, your income goes up. Now, the phase-out period is anything above $263,410 to be exact. 
and it faces meaning it decreases and decreases so you won't get the maximum of the full eight fourteen thousand eight hundred ninety dollars all right now earned income tax credit this is very well known also as eic um and this was a credit that i think in my personal opinion was a wonderful credit to really uh implement and it's because there was a lot of what we consider poverty level where people were working, not working actually, and just teen welfare, as we used to call them many years ago. Um, and what happened with that, they wanted to motivate, you know, parents, especially single, you know, uh, um, mothers to actually work in the, in the market. I mean, they didn't want them to be just collecting from the government. So to motivate you, they created this credit and it can be valuable between $560 all the way to yes, $6,935, almost $7,000. Now, it depends again, again, the status. Are you single? Are you separate? That is going to make a huge difference. And also your go, your adjusted gross income, okay? Now, it has to be less than $59,000, okay? And as you can see, if I highlight, it takes you directly to the link, which gives you all the rest of the details that you need to have. So again, this is a wonderful credit worth a lot of money, um, and especially up to seven thousand. As long as it depends how many how many kids you have, and also it depends on your AGI. All right. Now let's go into charitable donations deductions. There was a nice increase in the last few years from fifty percent. It went up to sixty percent. Right. We always like to see that. In general, you can take up to sixty percent of your just gross income. Okay. It's a little extra that you can take, but remember to do this, you have to do Schedule A. And Schedule A is what we consider itemized deductions. Now, if you only take in standard deduction, don't worry. Remember that we have that extra $600 per year that you can take as a deduction for any charities that you've done, all right? And you do not have to file Schedule A. You don't have to itemize, okay? So just keep that in mind. But if you are itemizing because it's beneficial to you, in other words, to get all these additional credits, and especially if you have a property, paying taxes, and you're paying interest in your uh, mortgage, then it's something for you to contemplate and maybe say, you know what, it's more beneficial for me to take an itemized deduction versus a standard. And what I usually suggest to most taxpayers is make it comparable. I always say that, make it comparable. Do a return if you're doing yourself, be very precautious. So do one as a Schedule A and do another one as a standard deduction. That way you can make it comparable and see which is going to be more, you know, uh, beneficial. Okay. Now, what about medical expenses? The same thing for medical expenses, for example, again, you have to itemize. You have to use Schedule A. Okay. So this is where this comes very handy again. If you try it with Schedule A. Now, remember, just to give you an idea. Let's say, for an example, that you had dental work. Yes, that's right. Um, you also had maybe, um, you know, uh, expenses, not only dental, but you could have expenses for your eye classes, okay? Or even your eye contacts. Mm -hmm, that's right. And so it doesn't have to be an MD. It doesn't always have to be just medical right? Like we think about, uh, you know, maybe a, a general physician or a specialist or dermatologist. Yes, that's just medical, but dentals included in that expense and deduction. And also, like I said, your eye doctor, okay? It's all about you keeping track of all your expenses that you had. Now, the caveat with that is that you have to spend more than 7.5%, 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. So just to give you an example, let's say that you made, uh, you know, a uh, hundred thousand dollars with you and your spouse, fifty fifty thousand each, right? I'm just giving you just like a perfect example, hopefully. And you, between the two of you, let's say that you spent, all right, just six thousand dollars out of the year. Well, unfortunately, that six thousand dollars is not gonna cut it. Even though you did spend the six thousand dollars, it's not enough. 
you will have to spend more than $7,500 and $1, as I always say, <laughs> to really be able to then, now you can deduct the full $7,501 or $50 or whatever the amount is above that. You'll be able now to deduct the whole portion, but unfortunately, right? You have to spend more than $750, $7,500 out of the 100 to be eligible. And that's where a lot of people make mistakes because they think, oh, it's just whatever amount of time, seven and a half. No, it's above the seven point and a half percent. Okay. So again, if you had a hundred thousand dollars and you only spend six thousand dollars, that's only a six percent. You have to go above that seven and a half. Hopefully that's clear enough. And then finally, another one that applies to the schedule A, right? is the deduction for state and local taxes. As you know, there is a gap of $10,000 that you can deduct in property taxes, all right? Now, it doesn't matter. I know some of you are in really uh, expensive states like California, Oregon. You know, we have certain states out there like New York. Uh, you know, it, it could be also, you know, I heard even, um, Chicago, the certain states, the property taxes are extremely expensive. And people, I know it's a fact they're spending, you know, $12,000, $15,000, $18,000 per year just in property. But unfortunately, even if you use the itemized deduction, this is the maximum you can take, $10,000. However, the tip here is always dig into your state because they know that when this cap came along with our last president unfortunately what happened with that is the states kind of stepped up and they said wait a minute if we have high property taxes and people losing in that deduction because now max they can take in the federal return ten thousand dollars we're going to give you a contribution and what was happening is a lot of states of these in ohio they offering you sometimes a few thousand dollars to a credit for your state return. So never forget that part. That's really important. I see people missing that out. Now, there's a little catch 22 on this one. If you marry finding separately, you can only take $5,000, okay? Now remember, that also applies to your local income taxes or your sales tax. If you don't have a property, okay, then you can use the sales tax, okay? You have to add up, especially if you had any expenses, which were like big ticket items. Let's say for an example, you had to purchase appliances, right? Your refrigerator, your stove, or perhaps anything else like a water heater for, for your home or anything that it was above high prop, you know, sales tax, combine all those receipts and that will give you some option to be able to even have an additional deduction out of that, okay? So you can have your property taxes, and then you can also have, you know, sales tax, because if there's no advantage above the $10,000, maybe your sales taxes are even more. So you want to apply that instead, okay? And that might be able to reduce your income, all right? So this is going to be a section, like I said, part one, and so far we have covered, okay, 10 of the main write-offs. Remember the child tax credit, the dependent credit, okay, the American opportunity, the lifetime learning, okay, credit, the student loan interest, and also the adoption credit, the earned income credit. And I'm just doing a recap that way you can always go back, the donation deduction, the medical, and also the state and local taxes. In part two, we're going to go ahead and jump in to the mortgage interest deduction, which is also part of Schedule A, if you're going to be itemizing. We're going to do the gambling losses. We're going to do the IRA contributions. We're going to do a 401k. We're going to do the savers credit. Aha, uh -huh, a lot of people miss on this one. The health savings account contribution, which will be called the HSA. The self-employment expenses, if you're self-employed, the home office deduction, the educator's expense deduction, and also residential energy credit and the electric vehicle tax credit. And we're going to go more in depth into that 
just to give you a little more tips, but I hope you found this information valuable. Again, I want you to look at your return and make a really good comparable, try to first do the standard deduction. But remember, if your itemize is gonna be higher, then that's the way you wanna go. Again, I know a lot of people now out there, they're doing the tax preparation, but I can honestly tell you from the times that I review hundreds of tax returns, as a tax account professional that I am, I can see people missing so many credits and deductions because sometimes or they're afraid or they're just not too aware of how they can apply these credits. So don't leave anything on the table. I always say, these are credits available for you. Take advantage and reduce your income that way you can keep more for you and your family. Well, anyhow, I hope this information has been helpful. And my intentions, like I said, for me is to be able to share as much inside and try to make things that are so complex with the, you know, the tax codes and regulations to make it a little more simple for people like you. Anyhow, I hope you like and you subscribe to my channel. Like I say, I have shared many, many information. You can go back if you're more self-employed or you know other people or family members or friends or neighbors that they can benefit from this information that I'm sharing, please go check out my channel. There's a lot of free content there, like I said, and um, I'm here to help. So by all means, I'll be seeing you in the next part. And thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.